Well, people, this is the exciting part. No other show is going to go through every game as fast as we are or be more accurate, at least in my case. The point is, <laughs> I wanted to, I wanted to offer a shot. week one, man. It's you, you caught one stray. Now, let's, let's just – this is important. A birdie told me. Yes. There were certain executive changes that were asked for where – Last year, you demanded, you threw down the Viking hammer and said, Michael, we are picking every game. What is this nonsense of several? I want to pick them all. Well, we're pretty much in every NFL city, so I would think that every NFL fan would like to hear about their team. Fair. And they're going to. But what I'm going to offer is this. You now have two veto powers a week. Okay. I can have two a week. So for the games, we're calling this the boomer cop-out clause. So the games where you're like, my goodness, this is difficult, or later in the year, my, both these teams are ratty, you can say, I don't want to select this game. Here's who I think will win, but it won't count against your record. All right, sounds good, yeah, but that's going to make it tough for Brian Rascone. No, though. it's not, because I'm going to say scones. I mean, I'm not incompetent. I think oh I can God. figure that out. Oh, my God. I mean, <laughs> Jesus. Well, God. I, I don't know. You had some questions last year in the middle of the season where you were kind of fumbling around with the – with the records and everything, and I feel like I got shortchanged. Oh, well, you put by 17 games? Come on. This is the 2020 election all over again. <laughs> I, <laughs> oh, I didn't lose. Boomer demands a recount. <laughs> all right, are we ready? Mike was on fire last year. Let's go. I know he was. <laughs> Which means I'm in trouble this year. Let's go to the picks. Picks of the week. Oh, and the sultry tones. I like it. People, this is what America calls the Cipriani Bowl, a game that the winner goes to spoils. Luxury. <laughs> Bengals laying two and a half at the Browns. This, Mr. Esiason. How could I go against the uh, the Bengals here? Because I mean, they were 25 years late putting you in the ring of honor. Yeah, that... <laughs> How about that? <laughs> well, they just started the Ring of Honor three week, uh, three years ago. What so, the hell have they been doing the last quarter of a century? Uh, I don't know. Sleepwalking, I guess. But now, since they have one of the most popular teams, one of the most popular players in Joe Burrow, and one of the most popular combinations with him and Jamar Chase, now all of a sudden everybody's kind of waking up to just how good this team really is. And I know Joe Burrow hasn't played, and he's been dealing with the calf issue and all that other stuff. I fully expect him to start for this game. And you know what? The, the reason why I'm picking them is, to win this game is because last year they got off to a slow start, if you remember, 0-2, and they played poorly in that first game against the Pittsburgh Steelers. So I think that they re remember that. I know that Zach Taylor has been pushing that narrative in their training camp. So I, I just – I'm not sold on Deshaun Watson yet. I'm sorry. Uh, you can you can sit here and tell me what a great player he once I'm was. I'm not going to do that. But I know you – I feel like this – since you named it the Cipriani Bowl, that you are going to pick the Browns. No, I'm, I'm a gentleman, though. I'm not going to have you only right. dinner on the first pick of the year. Look, everybody is back for the Bengals. Plus, they added Orlando Brown Jr. as their left tackle. Moved in Jonah Williams, maybe to guard. Maybe he'll start at right tackle. We'll see. But at the end of the day, this team is loaded. They lost their two safeties, which is big for Lou Anarumo's defense. But I think that they are still the team to beat in that division. Browns. <clears throat> take the two and a half. It's a home divisional dog. Take the points. I'm all in on the Browns. I know it sounds crazy. I think they have a big bounce back here. And no, I don't think Deshaun has to be the player he was. But it, I, can he be 75% of it? I will say the biggest improvement for the Browns will be the same thing, but on the opposite side of the ball for the Patriots is Jim Schwartz, their defense coordinator. Yeah, they've I think got he's, the talent. He, right, and he is going to create an edge for that defense. There's no question about it. One of the best coordinator hires this offseason by a respective team. Nick Chubb to lead the league in rushing, plus 650. Free money. Um, game two, Vikings, minus six, taking on the Buccaneers. What do you got? Oh, man, I'll tell this you what. I, I, you hate the Vikings. I know you Frauds. do. I'm gonna Frauds. I'm going to take the Bucs here to keep it close. And I'm going to take the Bucs simply because I actually do like Baker Mayfield. I, what he did for the Rams at the end of last year was nothing short of amazing. Uh, he's got two terrific wideouts, and I know Mike Evans is in a contract dispute, so I think he's going to want to have a big year. And I know Todd Bowles feels a little bit more comfortable this year than he did last year. And, you know, quite frankly, the Vikings, I'm still not sold on their defense. I have no idea what Brian Flores has got cooked up uh, up there. And that's another good uh, defensive coordinator hire for the Vikings. So I'm going to take uh, I'm going to take the Bucks to keep it close here. Wrestling heel turn. Veto, I don't want to pick it. Let's go to game three. Okay. <laughs> Atlanta laying three and a half, hosting Carolina. Bryce Young debut. 
Right, and I'm going to take uh, I'm going to take uh, Desmond Ritter and the uh, the Falcons. I think uh, Bijan Robinson's going to have a huge year. It's going to be offensive rookie of the year will either be him or Jameer Gibbs, I yeah, believe, of the Lions. These two kids are tremendous running backs. We didn't really see much of Bijan Robinson in the uh, in the in the preseason, but they did name him running back one this week. And he's going to get a lot of touches. And I think Desmond Ritter is going to surprise a lot of people for Look, the Falcons. Kyle Pitts is a forgotten man, too. Thousand-yard years of rookies. Had no quarterback play. He got hurt last year. They got weapons. Drake London, Pitts. The defense will be better. I'm not saying good. Uh, I'm with you. This is one of the rare moments where I go, all right, I'll lay north of a field goal in the divisional game. I'll take right. Atlanta. Jags. Let's see if Boomer learns something here. Jags laying five and a half at Indianapolis. Boy, this is Vegas's. I got you a dollar. Go ahead, Boom's only five and a half. You just yes, got to win the game by I know, six, buddy. But man, it's Anthony Richards starting for the Colts, and who knows? <laughs> who knows what's going to happen? I mean, this you is the wild the, card. You can use the veto. Uh, you know, I am going to veto this one. There I know the is. I know the Jags are going to win the game, but I'm I'm not I'm staying away from this just because I know this is a wacky kind of division game opening weekend. You just said it. Week one, some weird. You know what happens. Devil's number five and a half, home dog. I, I'm riding it. I'm going right into the lightning. Let's do it. Colts, give me the five and a half. Ooh, boy, I, okay. It's disgusting. Yes. You have to be, people, America, you have to be comfortable with the uncomfortable if you're going to play the NFL. You don't get to pick the brand names. You don't get to di- You don't get to look like this man in an underwear ad in 86. You have to be uncomfortable. You got to bet mud. Rats. By the way, that was 91. Whatever. Um, let's now, let me get... ask you a question. What are you, Deion Sanders? You got to get comfortable with the uncomfortable? No, I didn't say, do you believe and scream at reporters? Okay. I, that was something, by the way. Okay. We'll, we'll, we'll save that. <laughs> okay. Let's go Niners minus two and a half at newly coined Boomer Sice and Pittsburgh Steelers. That's right. So I, I have the Steelers making the playoffs this year. I think their defense is going to be awesome as it always is. I think they're going to run the ball exceptionally well. And I think Kenny Pickett is this year's Jalen Hurts. He's going to take the next step and he's going to show everybody that he deserves to be an NFL quarterback. And he fits right in perfectly with Mike Tomlin and what they want to do out there in Pittsburgh. And look, you're catching the 49ers. They say that they are preparing for Nick Bosa, yeah, the, right. the Steelers. I, I don't think Bosa's not going to play in this game. And if he's not playing in this game, even if he is playing in this game, what has he been doing? Has he been working against high school tackles yeah. or something? You can't simulate football. No, you can't. And, look, I like what the, the Steelers try to do with their offensive line. I, I'm telling you, they put uh, Kenny Pickett back under center a lot more. Uh, that's where he's most comfortable, play action passing, move him around. He's more mobile than most people think. And two good backs. Don't sleep on Jalen Warren. That's a perfect right. compliment to Najee. So I'm, t- I'm taking the Steelers in an upset here. Here's another rule. Tomlin. Home dog covers like 70%. I'm with you on this. Oh, I, who knows that? How did you know that? Things, man. Information, stuff. See, this, these are the things that I learned. I'm not here for my looks. Okay. Commanders. That, here, here's the grossest game of the millennium. Commanders lay in seven, hosting a traveling grease fire known as the Arizona Cardinals. <laughs> I'm taking the Commanders, and I'll lay the seven. I don't care. The, the, the Cardinals are going to be the worst team in the league. I I just watching some of the stuff that has come out of their preseason. Between the owner, yeah. the GM, a rookie coach, the quarterback's dead. I, I, they release this, who was supposed to be the starter. They brought in Josh Dobbs off the street. You know I, why they brought in Josh Dobbs? Because he can move. Uh, I thought it was because he was an aerospace engineer. <laughs> no, because he could move. He's smart, yes. But, you know, the, the fact of the matter is Colt McCoy was like a statue back there. Yeah. And was probably going to throw a lot of interceptions. Fun I, note. I got something for you. You want another little yes, fact to it? yes. Cardinals win total over under is three and a half. That is the lowest win total for an NFL team since Jacksonville Jaguars in 1995. Wow. That's yeah. how bad people think this team could be. And I think they're they're in the Caleb Williams sweepstakes no matter what they say about Kyler Murray. Drake May. How dare you? Uh, Saints. Caleb Williams. Drake May. Saints Caleb minus. Williams. Th- all right. We'll, we'll do it all year. It's going to be fun. And okay. there's another kid you haven't mentioned yet. We'll, we'll, we'll discuss. Shador Sanders. No. Riley Leonard. Oh, yeah. Well, we'll learn it. How about Michael Penix? Love. Okay. Love. All Love right. Me. I'll take the commanders, Eddie. Sorry. Let's do it. Michael Penix is a stud. He is. Saints laying three to the Titans. What do you got? I'm I'm taking uh oof. Yeah. Vrabel is a dog. Oh man, I, I'm I'm gonna take the I'm gonna 
You get veto. Use your veto. Uh, I, I want to take Mike Vrabel and the Titans. Then do it. It's going to be ugly. It's going to be like like smash mouth stuff going on here. In the words of Marlon Brando, you can act like a man. Select <laughs> the Titans if that's what you want to uh, do. Uh, you know, but if I say the Saints are going to have this great season. This guy's in his own head, people. This is where it has to start. Go. And Derek Carr's got to show he can be the leader. <laughs> Screw it. I'm taking the Saints. Done. Saints. And no analysis needed. Ravens laying 11 to the Texans. You know what to do, Boomer. Yep, I have learned. I have to take the Texans and lay the 11. I do. This, These are some of the lessons that were taught to me last year. It's so disgusting. I, I was doing it emotionally, and I know I feel there isn't a guy that I feel bad for more than C.J. Stroud. <laughs> He's got to open up against the Ravens. Oh, my God, with this new offense and this new spread Todd Munkin, they're not going to be playing with two tight ends on the field. There's going to be three wide outs and Mark Andrews running down the middle of the field. You got to take the points. And Lamar's going to be running all over the place. You just have to. You got to take the points. It sucks. It's hard to. It, I, I know. I could see them winning 31 to 3. You could veto it. Veto it. All right, I'm vetoing this. Done. That's my second veto. All right, you know what? Fine. I'll stay with it. I'll take the Texans on principle. Bears laying a point to the pack. I'm going to take the Packers. Good man. And I'm going to take the Packers because I do think that Jordan Love has got a lot to prove. He has sat quietly. Uh, he's learned from one of the greatest quarterbacks that we have ever seen. Uh, he's got a lot of talent around him. Their defense is going to be a lot better this year than it was last year. And I think everybody in Green Bay really needs to make a statement and wants to make a statement. I'm not sure where the Bears are right now. Neither am I. And, I the, and the Pack still. Best roster top to bottom in that division. They're missing the quarterback piece, Packers. E this is pros Joe's right here. Eagles laying three and a half at New England. Hey, why is that number so small? I'm taking the Patriots. He's learning. I'm laying the points. I'm taking the Patriots. I mean, I'm taking the points. Yeah. Um, I'm taking the Patriots. And the reason I'm taking the Patriots, they're honoring the great Tom Brady. And momentum doesn't carry over season to season. The team we watched with the Eagles who were rolling, that has nothing to do with right now. So here's another spot where I'm talking about a coordinator that was hired in the offseason. That's Bill O'Brien. You know, when he was there and he was with Tom Brady, they were the number two scoring offense in the NFL. Oh, you mean Matt Patricia in a moo moo calling plays is mm. not ideal? It's not great, no. But this is going to be good for Mac Jones. And Mac Jones is one of my five top quarterbacks under pressure as we get ready to start the season. He starts year three. He's yep. got another coordinator, and now he's got to figure it out. Whether or not, and they got to figure it out whether or not they think that they have their long term answer at quarterback. Seattle laying five and a half hosting the Rams. I'm vetoing. I have no opinion. It's disgusting. I want no part of this game. All right. I'm taking Seattle. I will, lay the, I will lay the points. And I, the reason I say that is because the Rams have got the youngest team in the NFL. Uh, Matthew Stafford, according to his wife, Kelly, doesn't even know half the team. Oh, please. Because most of the team is in their phones when they come out of practice. I mean, I Wah. can't believe that she violated that like Wah. covenant. You know what oh, I mean? Oh, you can't? Try working in Detroit. Okay. Stories for days. We'll just leave it alone. Seattle, Rams. I'm, t I'm tired of I'm taking Seattle. Good. I'm vetoing. Broncos, Raiders. I'll make this simple. Broncos laying three and a half. You're taking the Broncos. I can't. Friends don't let friends bet on Josh McDaniels. I am not betting on Josh McDaniels and Jimmy Garoppolo. Biggest the, coaching mismatch of the weekend. Right I, here. I, I, it feels that way. And, you know, what's really interesting is how Sean Payton's ego is basically smothered Russell Wilson. Broncos it's, Nation. It's it's Let's the Broncos ride. defense. And, I yeah, I agree with you. I think it's going to be – well, Devontae Adams is going to go off no matter what. No doubt. Uh, Chargers, Dolphins. Chargers lay in three, and I'm going to say it for you because I know what this man's going to say. This is the year the Chargers get it right. I hope so. And this is going to be the <laughs> highest scoring game. I think this is the highest scoring game of the week. All Aren't right. you? Doesn't it feel that way? Yeah, but I like the Chargers at home, and so I think I. and I think they're healthy. I think Herbert could well, throw for five thousand. I th I I think they're just going to put the ball in his hand and let him rip it. Done. And they got Kellen Moore as their offensive coordinator. I'm taking the Chargers. All right, forty five seconds. Cowboys lay in three and a half at the G men. Come on. So, the Giants have everything riding on this game, just like the Jets have everything riding on their Monday night game, and I think that Daniel Jones proved last year that he can be their quarterback of the future. I think the Giants cover this number here. I don't know if they're going to win the game. Doesn't matter. But I'm going to take the Giants, and I'm going to do that 
on behalf of you to make that my man because I am a Giants fan. You are a Giants fan. Uh, In in honor of the other boomer, the G-Man. Let's do this. Yes.